Mark Lukajici, you are charging uh, one way Uganda uh, ministry in, in Uganda. Yes. And, and uh, I have been there once and, and I heard uh, you have been involved in this work uh, since 2010. Yes. But could you tell who is real Mark Lukajici? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Telo, for welcoming me here. Uh, I've been working with One Way Mission since 2010. My name is Mark Lugaisi. I started working with One Way Mission Uganda since 2010 up to now. I was born in a small town in Movende by then, but currently it is Mitiana district on the 19th of May, 1985. I hear from my mother that it was an evening and then I was produced from a big banana tree, a big banana plantation. So uh, I grew up particularly with my grandmother because my mother divorced when I was one year and two months. So we came to our grandmother's home and we stayed there for some good years till 1996 when she died. And then my mother would go to Mitiana town. It's like six kilometers away from the village. So she went there to learn some kind of skills that she can make like clothes maybe for us. And then she could look for maybe some money to support my grandmother. So we grew up with her and we went through a primary level, which takes like nine years. And then we went to secondary schools for four years and to the teacher training college. Uh, after the death of my grandmother, we stayed with a sister to my mother, just like three kilometers away from my grandmother's home. And then there we did a lot of things. Like I remember only like child labor was too much there. And during my senior four exams, we had no money to, for registration. We had to, my mother sent me like 20,000 shillings. By then it was too much. And I bought uh, yellow bananas to start making alcohol. So I made like two jerry cans of alcohol and sold them off so that I can have money for my senior four registration. But fun enough, it did bring out some good money. I only got uh, 25,000 and I needed 40,300 shillings around that. So I had to go to always ride a small bicycle to Mitiana town and get empty jerkins. I could get them from the village and then I pack them in a sack and I go to Mitiana town to sell them. There was a certain shop where we could sell. And once you buy like a jelly can of 20 liters at 2,000, you could sell it at 4,000 or 3,000. So I got some good money to top up on the registration fees. And I bought a new uniform for myself. And then I registered for my senior four. Uh, during uh, that time, life was not that simple and was that hard. Uh, we had to go to the school hostel and you know what it means to go to a hostel without a mattress. We had our village mattresses. Mm -hmm. These were like kind of mattresses made out of sacks and uh, dried grass. So we could cut a grass and we put in a sack and then we cover on top. So you sleep there. I only remember we had a small old cloth of our grandmother, something that I could remember about her that she could cover us with some of her clothes during the night. But when we came to our auntie, we had no something like to cover ourselves. We could just lie on the sack. So that is Mark. I have a family with five biological children, mm. two girls, and my oldest girl is already in secondary school. She's in senior one mm. and three boys. The youngest is two years. It's called Jesse. Mm. So I'm so happy that they are, the three of them are already in school. However, in my family, we are like 17 people there. 
I have some of the sponsored children that lost their parents due to Ebola. We are staying with them now and some other children so, also. So you are taking care of several children, yes, much the, more than only five, your yes, biological I, children. We have, uh, they are 10 plus my five who are that is 15 and the two of us. Yeah. So they have a family of 17. Yeah, it is very great. There. Yeah. However, uh, some of these, they are always there with us during school time. So when it comes like to holidays, we feel that they can also go and see like some of their relatives. They still have their grandparents. So we take them to their grandparents and maybe they mm. see them because we feel that maybe they miss their grandparents. Mm. And there are those that only lost like the father, so their mothers are there, we take them to mm. visit their mothers. But during school time, we yeah. definitely stay with them. Okay, but it seems that uh, this is what you are just now describing is, is some kind of charity or Christian mm. ministry. Yes. But, but how you came uh, familiar with Christianity? I, I suppose you haven't ever been in Christ. Yes, uh, I grew up from a Catholic family. My mother, my father, and my grandparents were all Catholics. So I went through all the Catholic kind of, uh, they have different stages that you go through. There is baptism, there is repentance, there is confirmation and all that. So I went through all that. It was during uh, my secondary education. There used to be some girls who were like from the Christian families who were born again. Mm. And something I didn't mention is during our secondary time after completing P7, there came a pastor from Mitiana town who started a secondary school in our village. Mm. So this pastor could sometimes preach during the general assemblies. So we could have him preach to us. But I remember one evening while doing my senior four is when a school matron came to us and started uh, asking us, why can't we join the Christian faith? But all along, I wanted so much to join uh, the Pentecostal faith, but I had a fear in me that if I change from maybe my auntie's religion, mm. I'll have nowhere to stay. Because she always told us that once you change from my religion, please mm. don't come back here. Mm. So I had a fear that if I change to the mm. Christianity faith, maybe mm. I'll have my way out of her home. Mm. So this evening I decided to, and I had three questions uh, because I never wanted to hear someone talking about father in life mm. because I didn't grow up with my dad. Nothing I can memorize about him. He neglected us. Uh, he could even beat our mother. We hear that. Mm. So everyone who could mention father, father, I was like, no, no, I don't want to hear that. So this lady came and said, we have a loving father. Yeah. His name is God. If you only believe and accept him, he will take care of you. Mm. Mm. And then I was like, what kind of a father is that? Even the one we have is just neglecting us. He doesn't love us. He doesn't mm. care for us. So I was like, no, I don't want to hear about that. Mm. Then I asked her some three questions that, uh, one, how sure are you that if we believe him, mm. he will not be behave the same way our biological father is mm. doing? Mm. And number two, how sure are you that once we believe him, he will love us more and he will take care of mm. us? And number three, how sure are you that we will not suffer more because we feel we have suffered much mm. in life. And then she said, yes, this father takes care of you. Mm. He will really love you and he's a loving father. He died for us. Mm. He sent his son on the cross and he died for us. Mm. Then these other two questions, she was like, I cannot assure you that you will not suffer. Mm. Neither I can't assure you that he will take definitely care of you, he'll provide for all. Mm. But one thing I know, once you devote yourself to him and mm. you love him more, you draw your life to him, mm. you get that close relationship with him, mm. you will not see suffering mm. at all. He will provide for all your needs and 
that's what she told us. And that evening, I remember, there was a youth service in the church mm. next to the hostel where we were staying. Mm. So we went to the fellowship, and yeah. then I confessed and I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. So that yeah. was in 2002 while doing my senior four exams. Yeah. So um, you dared to yeah. accept Jesus. Yes. What kind of effect it has had in your life? Uh, so uh, the list is endless, but I can just mention a few things that mm. I've seen ever since I uh, started moving with Jesus Christ. Number one, I had no hope for my studies. Mm. After senior four, life was a bit hard because I failed to go back to my aunt in the village. Then I decided to stay with my mother at least mm. in town in a small room that she was renting. So we could keep home and then this lady had tried to teach us how to pray. So I could stay home praying and I'd started learning how much to do the praying and fasting. Mm. So I had time to pray for myself. So after like a period of three months, our exams from the examination board were announced out and we had made it well with my sister. Mm. So the same pastor came looking for us mm. after mm. him getting the news from the Ministry of Education that we are given bursaries to go to the teacher training college. Mm. I realized that now I have a loving God. I have a loving father yeah. because all the time I've been praying that God, mm. I need to go back to school. Mm. So that is number one thing that yeah. maybe strengthened me in Christianity, yeah. that this father, he, he has started now paying for my school fees so we went for a teacher training college for two years. And during my time in the college, my mother could not do any shopping for us. Mm. But I remember also one pastor who used to visit us in the college and some students, they could give me it. And some, then once this pastor comes, he could give me some money. Mm. So he's one of the people these days that I love much because he, loved me in the college time. So even he comes to visit me in Imovende, he stays in Nakaseke, something like uh, 300 kilometers away from Movende. But he comes to us and he is like a father to me because he helped me during the college time. But still I cannot fail to mention how God has been faithful in providing in all my life since okay. I started this mm. journey of Christianity. So we have a, a Heavenly Father who is loving us. Definitely He does. Yeah. He mm. loves us much mm -hmm. than maybe our biological parents because mm. at least now mm. I know I have a Father who is much more loving mm. than the one we have on earth. Yeah, yes. I suppose sometimes we have a, a wrong picture of God yes. because of our background. This is, this is not only in, in your case, <clears throat> I have heard this uh, uh, many other stories mm. uh, and, and people, uh, they are afraid in God, yes. but he really, he is a loving that God. God. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So uh, this is your first time in, in Finland, I suppose. Yeah, it is. How you have felt this trip until now? Uh, a lot of experience. I can't compare Finland to Uganda. Uh, first of all, uh, people here much so much loving. I can say that we don't speak the same language, but you can feel they are warm. Mm. welcome and that love. And previously we've been praying for Finland and all our sponsors and mm. donors, but we didn't know the kind of people we are praying for. Yeah. At this now comes a very big burden to pray for them because I have realized mm. and come to know the kind of people we work with mm. and what kind of people we are praying for always. So mm. there comes a need to pray for Finland, I think, like I have so much uh, touched with you not having that permission to do the evangelism. But in Uganda, we do it freely. You yeah. uh, can go anywhere and you put them as, uh, the musical instruments, you pray them, mm -hmm. and then you start preaching. Mm -hmm. And I've realized that people here, uh, their life is <laughs> a bit different from us. There is the way how we take things, we like, like we take them for granted, but it's not like here. A lot of experience, good roads and everything. Mm -hmm. And what yes. about food? <laughs> no, that. What about food? Uh, I had a threat in my mind that what kind of food will I have there? Yeah. But I honestly, God has been so faithful to me 
ever since I arrived. I've been eating a lot of berries. Uh, uh. And something good to note is in Uganda, you don't just take water from anywhere. Mm. If you don't have like bottled water from the shops, mm. maybe from when you get water from the tap, you need to go and boil it. Mm. Mm. But here, no, you uh. got the tap and you take uh. water, sh you yeah. just drink. Yeah. Something amazing. Yeah. What would you like to take with you when you go, travel back to Uganda? One thing I can maybe take back to Uganda is I need to tell my church leaders that there is a need, we, there's something we can do. We don't have money, but there's something we can do. Yeah. And that is only we can pray for Finland for a, a total revival. Yeah. You still need much more of God. Mm -hmm. And that maybe from the political side, maybe they can try to embrace and welcome Christianity yeah. in the country. There are a lot of uh, persecution, a lot of restrictions yeah. for the gospel. Yeah. That is something I can maybe take back and is, I feel it that we can now pray yeah. for that. Yeah. Yes. So it was very nice to talk with you, uh, Mark Luya Luka Yichi. Yes. Uh, thank you for this interview so much. You are welcome. Thanks. Thank you.